30 years that I've been doing interviews, the best I've ever heard. The way to fix the world is through parental evolution. To zone in on the parent-child dynamic is to heal the planet. I'm not asking you to give up control. Rest. Keep your control. I'm asking you to do something far more profound, far more challenging, far more severe. Give up control, easy. What I'm asking you to do is give up your delusion that you even think you need to have control. So I ask you today, for those of you who have children in your lives, to follow their lead because they will take you into the present moment like no one else can. It is just our resistance to enter the new. So I ask you, are you ready to enter the new? Are you ready? Awaken yourself to your own healing. Heal your own baggage, discover your own wounds, resolve your own unmet needs, and turn the spotlight within. That is the entry point for raising a resilient child. That is the way to begin creating connection. I just couldn't stop crying because it just felt like everything she was saying resonated within me in such a deep way. And she was saying things I had never heard anyone else say before, but they felt so familiar. It is time for us parents to answer our call to our own awakening. What she's doing is something like pretty inexplicable because I mean what she's talking about is profound but very simple at the same time. But it's the way she does, the joy that she brings to the conversation, I think, is really empowering. Because I've seen a lot of different people try to talk about this subject matter. She just brings this beautiful, constant flow of joy to the discussion and to the work. The moment is now, and our children await. She's absolutely revolutionary and so evolved that her ideas are really a paradigm shift that can change the world. Dr. Shafali Sabari. دوستان به برنامه مام تاک مادر و کودک خوش آمدید در این برنامه‌ای که امروز براتون تهیه کردیم با دکتر شفالی کسی که ایشون به صلاح پیش رو راهنما و روانشناس بالینی هستند که در رابطه با کانشس پرنتینگ و اینکه چگونه ما میتونیم ارتقاء آگاهی، ارتقاء اندیشه، ارتقاء بهتر زیستن و بهبودی در رابطه با روابطمون با فرزندانمون و اینکه اصلا رابطه مادر و کودک و یا پدر و کودک در چارچوب کانشسنس و خداگاهی چگونه دیده میشه، چگونه میشه اندیشید و چگونه میشه او رو پیش برد این برنامه برای من خیلی به صلاح مخصوص هستش خیلی دلنشین هستش و خیلی دوست داشتنی هستش به خاطر اینکه دکتر شفالی از کسانی هستش که من همیشه در کارهای خودم و در اندیشه های خودم و در شناخت بهتر از خودم و روابطم و بهبودی روابطم با فرزندانم کارهای ایشون رو همیشه به کار می برم و همیشه توصیه می کنم و همیشه با مراجعین خودم با خانواده هایی که باشون کار می کنم همیشه توصیه می کنم که حتما اگر شده یه ورکشاپ یک آنلاین کورس و یا یک ایوالف کانفرنس حتما برن عزیزان و والدین تا اینکه اون دید کانشسنس و یا دید اون چیزی که 
بهش انقلابی فکر کردن به رابطه مادر و پدر با کودکان رو از نزدیک به صلاح ببینن اگر دوستان عزیزان علاقه مند هستن که این کنفرانس ایوالف رو که از تاریخ 15 سپتامبر همین به صلاح ماه آینده ماه سپتامبر در پیش هستش اتند بکنن و تشریف بیارن و شرکت بکنن و جزوی از اون خانواده هایی باشن که تا چندین سال و سال در یک کامیونیتی یک کامیونیتی بزرگتر با هم دیگه پیش میریم و این روابط مادری و پدریمون رو با بچه هامون جلو میبریم ارتقاء اندیشه و آگاهی در این چارچوب کانشسنس و پیس لرنینگ حتما توصیه میکنم که این اطلاعات رو دریافت بکنین کنفرانس رو شرکت بکنین هنوز تیکت خواهد بود ولی به زودی ممکنه سولد اوت بشه بنابراین حتما برین روی وبسایت drshafali.com در چارچوب ایوالف کانفرنس و به صلاح بلیت های خودتون رو تهیه بکنین و تشریف بیارین من اونجا خواهم بود و خوشحالم که اونجا از نزدیک هم دیگر رو ببینیم و با هم یاد بگیریم دکتر شفالی it's a pleasure to have you on mom talk today Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you. Welcome, welcome. So uh, tell us about um, Evolve. I know we opened up with uh, the Evolve conference and uh, what a revolution and what um, an experience this has been, I know, for our community. I know within our community, uh, so many parents who have been awakened by your work and by the consciousness that you have brought to or unfolded within all of us and continue to learn and evolve with you. So give us a little bit of uh, briefing on the Evolve, the conference, and what you expect for uh, the parents to learn or, you know, what are the objectives uh, from this conference? Sure. sure. So I intentionally create, created this conference so that parents can come together, and this is not just for parents, this is for educators, for coaches, for adult children who suffer from their own childhood, to gain perspective in a collective way on how it is that they came to be who it is they are, and how it is they're going to impact their children. So it's three days of really learning to go inward, really learning to not react in a controlling and angry way, dealing with anger, anxiety, all the issues that come up when you raise children and really learning a new way and learning how to think in a new way when dealing with your children. So I think it's going to be profoundly important that parents allow themselves this opportunity. There'll be fabulous speakers. It's from the 15th through the 17th in September, right in your neck of the woods in Long Beach, California. So I hope your community tries to come and we can offer them a code of $50 off if they use the code 50 off. We can offer your readers and listeners and viewers that code. Wonderful. I know um, from the events that I have attended, your events, um, there's always a surprise, a mystery, an unfolding of consciousness within me that I was not aware of, which is always so wonderful. Um, I am, uh, I experience many aha moments and vulnerability. I know that I've cried, that I've uh, unpacked um, um, a lot of, um, sort of parental, parent-child, as well as uh, intergenerational experiences myself. And that's always fascinating to me because uh, I, I continue to work on my relationships with, you know, the relationship with myself and my children, our children, and my, my parent, um, our parents. Um, and it's always fascinating to hear you uh, so intentionally say that we got to zone in on the parental, the dyadic, triadic relationship, the parent-child relationship, and bringing more peace into the world and healing the world. Yes, yes. I try to um, allow for parents to understand themselves in a layered way. So that's why you'll experience many emotions when you're there. Because the unfolding of consciousness is not a linear path, nor is it quick. We need time. That's why I do it for a whole weekend, because you can't just bypass this most important process of understanding yourself so that you can raise your child better. So we need to take our time as parents. We need to spend the money and the time and the effort and leave our children behind for a weekend in order to go back as the best parents we can be. And mothers especially resist this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because we don't think of ourselves as important 
And it's pivotal that we change this. We need to place ourselves and our own consciousness at the highest uh, priority on the list so that then we enter the dynamic with our children with wholesomeness and they pick up on this and then they lead their lives with joy and abundance. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So um, for those viewers who are joining us from the Middle East, uh, Iran, Afghanistan, um, uh, Turkey, uh, Iraq, you know, the Middle Easterns, um, there's always this interesting sort of uh, gender equity, equanimity topic that comes up whenever women talk about self-care. Uh, and so what's your advice to women uh, from the Middle East who are struggling or are challenged by this? It's hard. It's very hard for women in cultures where there is a sharp division between males and females to put themselves first on one hand. On the other hand, here in the West, the woman gets pressure to do everything, you know? So because the, the roles are less stratified and there's more diffusion, it also causes confusion in the West. So both have their pros and cons. I think what's important is that no matter where the woman lives, is that she set aside a prioritized time for herself to go inward and understand who it is she is um, in this collective that she lives in. You know, in Middle Eastern countries or in my country, in India, women are ensconced within a very strict cultural stereotype of how they should be. Mm -hmm. And that can be sometimes suffocating and limiting. Mm -hmm. So to find who it is they are in conflict sometimes with the larger we, mm -hmm. the we culture, the collective culture is hard. So to give themselves time to prioritize who it is they are and do something every day that feeds their soul. Yeah. Yeah. And I've noticed, uh, especially in my practice or working with, um, you know, Iranian Americans or Persian families here uh, in Los Angeles, that oftentimes starting the conversation early and continuing with the conversation and keeping it as um, sort of an integrated part of uh, the daily living is uh, really helpful in just creating those small steps, perhaps every day, perhaps once a week, or how, however often you know it fits within the family system, that to have those conversations, to value self-care, to um, allow those um, uh, mirroring, those uh, you know face-to-face, belly-to-belly, empathetic experiences, really surface, um, and to internalize uh, the value of this for, for perhaps those of us who um, carry some guilt or epigenetically are suffering from feeling guilty when we do practice self-compassion. Yeah, it's very hard and we've been trained to put ourselves last yeah. and what we do by putting ourselves last is, you know, negating our own divinity and our own right to live our own life. And what kind of message is that to send to your children? Yeah. I mean, there's no virtue in self-sacrifice. But in our cultures, especially our cultures, we have been told it's a virtue to be the good girl, to be the obedient girl, to be the compromising girl, to be the one that always overcompensates and overtakes care of everybody. Yeah, that's wonderful and beautiful, but not at the expense of the self. Mm -hmm. So to know that fine line between self and other is very important. The other cannot be more important than the self. The other cannot be more important than the self. And this is a very radical and contradictory message in cultures like ours. Mm. Okay, I'm going to take a moment to translate. It's such an important um, uh, sort of uh, thought to uh, intentionally focus on and uh, help integrate within one's consciousness. Dostan ba khanum Dr. Shefali sohbat mikonim ishun az pish kesfatani hastan ke dar rah be salah ertaqay consciousness khodagahi va ya charchub consciousness faaliyat kardan muhaqqiq hastan va ravanshanas balini hastan. و ایشون توصیه‌ای که دارن در رابطه با به صلاح شفقت نسبت به خود یا خداگاهی نسبت به شفقت این هستش که می‌بایست به خصوص ما زنان ایرانی به خصوص ما زنان خاورمیانه در چارچوب رسیدگی به اون نیازهای خود و یا درونی و یا اون نیازهایی که مربوط میشه به شفقت یا ارتقای شفقت در خود توجه 
توجه بکنیم چرا که خیلی از اوقات ما مادران ما زنان ایرانی در فکرمون در رفتارمون در شیوه ارتباطیمون توجهمون همیشه به دیگرانه اینی که سرویس بدیم اینی که بدونیم که مادرمون پدرمون فرزندانمون همسرمون اونها چی میخوان و برای اونها چه نیازهای اونها رو میتونیم بهش رسیدگی بکنیم و یا بهش سرویس بدیم و در چارچوب سرویس فعالیت بکنیم در صورتی که وقتی که کانشسنس یا خداگاهی توجهش مکررن به بیرون و به صلاح انرژی و سرویس دادن به دیگران باشه اون مشکلی رو که اون چالشی رو که فرد یا مادر یا زن احساس میکنه مشکل کم بودن انرژی و یا رسیدگی به نیازهای خود هستش و اون خانم دکتر شفالی توجه میکنن و میگن تاکید باید باشه که یه تعادلی بین این که ما چقدر به دیگران رسیدگی میکنیم و چقدر به خود رسیدگی میکنیم خودی که با معنا هستش در چارچوب معنا و شفقت هست نه خودی که فقط به خودمون برسیم یا خرید بکنیم یا چیزایی که شاید هیچ معنایی نداشته باشه self compassion by your chef at an aspect the hood um uh, thank you dr shafali uh, i um uh, am so honored to have you on mom talk again it, it's such a pleasure and i know for many viewers and i know many of my clients who have learned about your work who are uh, committed to uh, learning and following and attending your online courses and uh, to be more awakened by your work uh, that for, for us, for our bigger community, we always um, appreciate these annual uh, conferences. I know the Evolve Conference, um, Araya, I know she has been uh, with you for um, uh, years and I know within our Iranian American community here in Los Angeles, many are big fans and supporters of your work. Have you um, experienced any interesting uh, cultural differences in working with the Persian families or the Iranian American community? Well, I think like what we just talked about, mm -hmm. our cultures, including mine and yours, uh, is very embedded in the family and very embedded in the extended family. Mm -hmm. And the community is kind of uh, interwoven and the po power of that is that children get exposed to multiple adults. Yeah. The disempowering element could be that the community becomes very obsessed with talking about each other and comparing each other mm. and mm. always trying to sh outdo the other. Mm. That's the shadow side of communal living. And children then get caught up in those expectations of being a certain way. And another downfall that it could be, and a positive, the positive of belonging to a community is so powerful. And the shadow of that is that then you feel you have to live up to this community ideal. And if you don't live up to it, then you're going to feel a lot of shame. There's a lot of pressure on children to follow the way of the larger community. So these things have their beauty, and then they have their shadow, like everything in life. Mm. Yeah, and I certainly relate to um, even our greater Los Angeles community here with, with this uh, the struggle, the duality, and the light and shadow, or moving you know towards um, awakening or perhaps away from it. Um, I know. Uh, we're starting back to school. Many families have started back to school or back to school, or many families are getting ready to go back to school. And I always um, find it very helpful when uh, the beginning or the intent for uh, getting back to school is always focused on spiritual growth, uh, the infinite process of peace learning throughout this year, and how we can come alongside each other and support one another in this mm -hmm. uh, excitement or this curiosity of learning, mm -hmm. whether it's the shadow or uh, the light, um, you know, end of things. Yes, absolutely. And going back to school is often something that children get anxious about. And the reason for that is the way it's been set up. Mm. It's set up for so much pressure and expectation. So we need to change that. Mm. So our children can re-enter the school and academic year with some vigor and excitement, not the pressure to succeed or to fail. Mm. That's beautiful. So uh, what, do you, what do you recommend uh, to families who are either, you know, they've started school or getting ready uh, for back to school? What are some uh, tips 
that you suggest to ease and uh, relieve some of the anxiety and get them ready in a spiritual, meaningful way? Well, I think, you know, it's an ongoing process where parents really negotiate their own understanding of why they're sending their children to school, mm. not to fall into the pressure that mainstream puts on them, that they need to raise some fabulous product at the end of it or some genius. Understand that those are societal and mainstream expectations, and their expectation needs to be that their child loves learning or loves to go to school or enjoys the process of discovery. But in order for that to happen, the parents need to be very clear about, you know, what is their philosophy around this? Can they truly detach from their expectations from their children and all these ideas around success and achievement and really help their children to evoke within themselves a desire to do well and a desire to shine and a desire to learn? I mean, that's really the, the, the key that needs to be turned and activated in the child. But it depends on the parent. If the parent is so anxious and looks at school as such an indicator of worth and the grades as the marking, defining event, then their children will pick up this anxiety and stop the joy of learning. Yeah. Yeah, I know um, that I, I've noticed when parents are focused on character and just virtues of um, peace learning, getting curious about learning, exploring who they are as a learner, um, and just having freedom to uh, play and get curious and explore, exactly. whether it's their relationships or relationships with teachers or relationships with each other. It's always nice to support and cultivate that uh, and throughout the year to really stay focused and intentional on not you know, paying any attention to the academics and uh, because that will come, you know, if that's something that your child is really drawn to or curious about, you know, it will grow organically. And I think when we focus on character and other virtues that are uh, more part of um, development, then we're really cultivating peace and consciousness and awareness. Absolutely. But to, to have that trust, right, parents mm. need to have that trust. Yeah. and hold back on the anxiety and let the process do the work. We, we are too impatient. It's mm. too hard to let the process of life do its work. We want to jump in and intervene and control it and make it happen. But really, that's where we do the most harm. We need to just allow and step back and trust just like in our lives. You know, all that pressure that we may have felt didn't do us any good. So in our lives, we know that what works is our own evolution. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to allow that with the children too. Yeah, and, and when I've talked to parents um, on this topic, sometimes just the thought of letting go, the, the delusion of control, as you described it beautifully, mm -hmm. is, um, is nerve wracking. You know, they... <laughs> Absolutely, you feel like you're being a bad parent. Yes. Yes, and so uh, to, for, for those parents who are in that space and, and uh, they're just holding on with their dear life <laughs> and not Absolutely. letting go, what, uh, what are your suggestions? H how can they ease up a little bit and trust and move and, you know, I guess lead with love in that space? Well, you know, it, it's, to, it's to show them that this anxiety is doing them no good. Okay. What good is this anxiety doing? It's contaminating and polluting. Mm -hmm. It's causing stress and overwhelm. It's yeah. causing fatigue and no joy. Life has become drab and joyless. Everything is about stress and anxiety and comparison and competition and mm -hmm. thinking about the future. This is no way to live. They have to find a whole new way to live where they enter the present moment and relinquish their delusion that they have control over their children. You know, we want to just control their future. We want to guarantee that they will be okay. But this is not how life works. There is no guarantee. And it is this inability to accept that there's no guarantee in life and to succumb to the present moment. That's a whole new way of living. No one, you have to train yourself to live like that. No one knows how to live like that. And that's what I teach, is to train, how to train oneself to live an entirely different way. 
Um, I'm going to do a Farsi sure. pause. Um, so, Dustan dar rabete ba sokhanan besyar danishmandane va khodagah khanum Dr. Shefali dar in charchub consciousness sohbat mikonim va inke chegune mitunim yek shift, ye taqeer, yek tahawul dar tarz fikremun, dar shiwe rabetemun ya no rabetemun ba farzandanemun, no rabetemun ba khodemun tajrube bokonim. و ایشون توصیه میکنن که در اوقاتی که شاید مادر و پدر مضطرب هستند یا شاید الان آغاز سال نو تحصیلی یا بازگشت به مدارس معلمین دانش آموزان مادر و پدران اگر اون استراب و دلهوره ای رو که تجربه میکنن بتونن کنار بگذارند و به جای اون استراب علاقه مندی و تشویق و ذوق و شادی طبیعی شادی که در درون بچه ها هستش نهفته ولی ما خیلی از اوقات ما مادران و پدران به خاطر اون استراب های خودمون و به خاطر تاریخچه شوم خودمون شاید به خاطر اون اتفاقایی که برای ما افتاده دو نسل گذشته این استراب رو به بچه هامون ناخداگاهانه منتقل می کنیم و چه خوب که برای بازگشت به مدرسه یا آغاز سال نو یا به قول معروف back to school ما این تنشنال باشیم با نیت این شروع بکنیم که این استراب و این ترس ها و این دلهوره ها رو بذاریم کنار و بذاریم که بچه ها واقعا با شوق و شادمانی و شادی این دوران تحصیلی نو رو شروع بکنن و روشون استرس نذاریم دائم مقایسه نکنیم پسر خاله تو اینجوریه دوست تو اینجوریه یا فلانی اینجوریه این شیوه برخورد یا رابطه برقرار کردن با بچه ها بسیار مسموم هستش و میبایست هستش که ما مادران و پدران ما والدین مسئولانه با مسئولیت اجتماعی قدم بذاریم و کار بکنیم و بدونیم که هرچه ما خداگاه تر با اندیشمند اندیشه های بالاتر یا شاید کانشسنس بهتر در این روابط جلو بریم با خودمون با فرزندانمون جامعهمون رو و به صلاح کالچر و فرهنگ و یک سوسایتی رو میتونیم کمک بکنیم Dr. Shafali, it's such an important point to uh, to really uh, zone in, you know, I, I think to be intentional about and to take those simple steps every day, those daily steps. And I love your um, website and I love how you have courses on this. It's an ongoing dialogue, an ongoing journey for those yeah. um parents who are interested. I know many of you, many of my clients um, whom I've referred them to get into your work and to become uh, more uh, awakened as a family have always come back and said, oh my goodness, this was the best thing that could happen to our family. And it's uh, enlightened us. Our children are happier. We are happier. We are less anxious. And we are um, moving uh, towards a more evolved self. And, and it's effortless. You know, they talk about this as once they deal and unpack and unfold some of the, uh, you know, pain and suffering, the vulnerability, that they enter this space of uh, joy and this flow with joy and happiness that is just makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It is an ever ongoing process. It's a marriage, you know, it's a yeah. commitment. I mean, if anything should be married to or anyone, it should be one's own higher conscious self. Mm -hmm. uh, and let uh, the other marriages be on their own till you discover your own self. Yes. Uh, because what's the missing piece in all of it is the discovery of the self. And my focus and my work is to turn the parent and so that they can turn the child toward that discovery. Because that is the reason we're here, is to find who we are. Yeah. Not to accommodate to other people and make them comfortable for the name of it. Mm -hmm. It's really to discover who we are, what we came here for, which is really to find our most authentic truth. I'm, I'm very um, uh, interested to know your definition of self-compassion. Can you unpack that for us, uh, you know, Dr. Shefali's position on self-compassion? Well, I think it's just, you know, when you're in touch with your nature, which is really a mirror of nature outside, of you are one with the universe. And nothing in the universe looks perfect, but it is all perfectly synchronized. It all makes sense. 
it's all toward the a constant evolution of things. Everything in nature is constantly moving and transforming. When you understand that you are a reflection of this, mm. then everything you do in your life will be treated with care and compassion. You won't enter shame or movies or stories around what you do. You'll simply learn to evolve from them and unfold. You won't mm. expect anything to be other than what it is, except you will only expect yourself to evolve through it. Mm. So if you make a mistake, you won't shame yourself. You'll evolve from it. That's why mm. I call my summit next month in California, Evolve, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's about evolution. Mm -hmm. It's about seeing every moment and every relationship as a call to go deeper and say, well, what does this mean for me? Mm -hmm. What is my truth? Where do I stand in this? How have I been false? So compassion would be the, the default because you're not expecting it to be anything else. You're not narcissistic to think that you're above being imperfect, mm. but you begin to use every moment to evolve. Okay, so just listening to that, uh, it just it's very peaceful to me, but I'm thinking about moments that I've experienced that, and um, what comes to mind are the, the moments in meditation when I'm in a, uh, you know, state of meditation and that uh, headspace where um, I'm able to tap into that. Now, are there other ways to cultivate self-compassion? Are there other ways that you cultivate sure. self-compassion sure. in your life? So one, understanding your divine nature and then really creating boundaries. Hmm. I think women especially, we are missing the essential skill of detachment. Hmm. It allows us to create boundaries. We're so scared of conflict. We're so scared of not pleasing people. We're so scared that we won't be good enough or seen as loving and nice, mm. you know? So we then don't create boundaries. And then people think that they can live their lives through us or that they can impose anything on us. And this is our loved ones. We must learn to create boundaries and understand that boundaries are essential in self-care. Mm -hmm. You cannot have self-care and self-compassion without boundaries. Right, right. Yeah, I, I personally know uh, that the most compassionate people I've known are the ones with great boundaries. And it's always um, uh, appalling to me when I'm talking to clients or families and I, I talk about boundaries and they um, come back and say, well, but, but that would mean that I'm selfish or I'm not being nice. Right. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. and yeah, so. <laughs> we conditioned, especially women, that nice means to compromise yourself. Right and to put the other before yourself. Mm -hmm. This cannot be, you know, and th this is an illness. Mm -hmm. And I know people like you and I from these cultures, we suffer from it and we have to learn to heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. because It's a misbelief <laughs> that, that we need to live our lives for in the service of others at the exclusion of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can first need to serve ourselves. And then from that, if it naturally comes that we serve others, good. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't naturally come, we cannot force it because we've been told or conditioned to. Okay. Very important point. Dustan dar rabete ba shafqat va self care va inke chera muhimme ke ma be khusus be onwan yek zan irani, be onwan yek zan sharqi, zan khawarmiyane-i tawajjuh bokonim be inke ta che haddi, che harim o marzhayi ro baraye khodemun bezarim ke avval khodemun ro پر بکنیم اول خودمون رو رسیدگی بکنیم از درون اون کانشسنس یا شناخت یا آگاهی یا ارتقاء خداگاهی در ما باید صورت بگیره من همیشه اینو میگم به دوستان و خانواده هایی که باشون کار میکنم میگم پیس لرنینگ یا این پروسه صلح یا پرورش صلح یک پروسه از درون به بیرون هستش بنابراین اگر در این مسیر از در این سفر با ما هستین یا علاقه دارین این رو قبول بکنین و باور بکنین از دکتر شفالی که واقعا یکی از پیش کسفتانی هستن که در این چارچوب کانشسنس تحقیق کردن فعالیت میکنن و به صلاح این کنفرانس ها رو برقرار میکنن سالیانه ایشون توصیهشون این هستش که به عنوان یک مادر به عنوان یک زن ایرونی اول به خودتون رسیدگی بکنین راحت باشین با اینکه 
خوب یا نایس یا به قول معروف زن خوب یا زن دوست داشتنی حتما نباید لزوما نباید باشین چرا که در فرهنگ ما شاید تشویق شدیم به اینکه دختر خوب باشیم زن خوب باشیم مادر خوب باشیم ولی اون خوب بودن در چارچوب رسیدگی و شفقت نسبت به خود می باید شروع بشه نه به این صورت که خدازاری بکنیم به خودمون بد باشیم با خودمون بد باشیم به خودمون رسیدگی نکنیم و فکر بکنیم که باید زن خوب باشیم یا مادر خوب باشیم در اون چارچوب هستش که بیماری هستش مشکل روحی روانی پیدا می کنیم و جلوی پیشرفتمون یا اون اولوشنمون رو می گیره That was brilliant. Thank you for that um, pearl of wisdom, Dr. Shefali. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, back to Evolve. Uh, I know many families have already signed up. I know many of my friends are coming. We're coming as you know our bigger tribe and I'm so excited to have the belly to belly and in-person experience with you. Um, tell us, um, for those viewers who are kind of undecided and are uh, want to come but they're not sure, um, what, what's expected? What, what do they get out of this? I mean, I know that just just the fact that you're focusing on uh, evolution and this um, consciousness and just cultivating consciousness and the beginning of fall and beginning of a new school year is just enough to run <laughs> and to be there. But for the families who are undecided or unsure, uh, how can we, you know, get them in? Well, I think... Uh, it's a decision that the parent has to make mm -hmm. to either change their ways or not. Mm -hmm. In order to change your ways, you need to learn new ways. In yeah. order to learn new ways, you need to embed yourself in a different atmosphere. And this is what my conference offers. Like you said, it's up close and personal. They, it's like having me for the personal therapy for the entire three days. I teach meditation. I teach how to connect. I talk about boundaries. We talk about anxiety, attention deficit how to create conditions so your children feel safe and connected to, how to understand your own generation, generational wounds and how to uncover them, how to heal in the moments so you don't react and project onto your children. Mm -hmm. You know, this takes eons of work. Yeah. Uh, I have people repeating and coming back year after year because one time is not enough. Mm -hmm. This is a whole different way of changing your whole mindset. And uh, they mostly get me teaching, but then I have fabulous other speakers that come and add their luminosity to the panels and to the groups. And it's a very intimate setting and you make friends and you learn from other parents. Um, there's an energy there that needs to be experienced. So I truly advocate that parents check it out. It's in Long Beach, California, September 15th through 17th. You can get a discount using the code 50 off for a $50 coupon and uh, hope to see you there. Wonderful. Well, I can't wait personally, and I know um, what I have gained um, most valuable part of this journey with you has been um, your uh, ability to penetrate and bring out the vulnerability in, in uh, me, and I, I think I've also witnessed in other parents in places where perhaps sometimes, you know, uh, we, we don't necessarily go there on our own. It's not very comfortable, but in the midst of vulnerability, I have also been able to cultivate empathy and to be reminded of the value of empathy in my relationship with my children, with my husband, with my family, extended family, and so forth, and other peers. I think that to me is uh, just so valuable, and I can't wait. I love that it's uh, in the beginning of a school year. I love that I'm going to come in and be able to evolve and connect and be with families who are like-minded, who value consciousness, who are um, interested in not just academic achievement, Achievement, but perhaps the spiritual achievement and, and really um, cultivating and elevating those um, dimensions of growth and spirituality that uh, we all you know, benefit from. I, I think when we're devoted to that, that the, the, the whole community wins. Absolutely correct. And uh, it's a step-by-step -step process, but parents need to take the first step. Yes. And this is what we do in our work, and we create summits and conferences for that to be, be a more 
potent reality, you know? So mm-hmm. take the plunge, make a shift in your life, take a course, uh, read a new book, you know, attend a summit like mine, do something actionable to change your life today. Wonderful. Um, tell us about your uh, online courses. I know the Awakened Heart um, and other online courses that you offer, perhaps for those viewers who are watching us all the way from Iran and uh, all the way yes. from Europe and Canada, and they can't join us in person at Evolve. Uh, how are some other ways that they can join this journey with you? Absolutely. That's why I do the online courses so that people in remote corners of the world who are interested and passionate about conscious parenting can watch and learn in their pajamas. <laughs> so they should go and check out all my courses on my website at drshafali.com and uh, pick one and start. You know, the Awakened Heart course is a course that's going on right now. It's for a year. Mm-hmm. They can jump in right now and, and take advantage or they can take one of my prior recorded ones and do it at their, at their own pace. Wonderful. Um, and, and your latest book, The Awakened Family, really unpacks the step-by-step uh, becoming more aware of consciousness within your family, within yourself, and how, as um, peace learning leaders, I think you can help uh, cultivate peace and to build um, spirituality in your community. Absolutely. The, the Awakened Family is not about one's own family. It's about the family of being an awakened soul who's part of this oneness Mm -hmm. that's what this book talks about yeah can you expand a little bit on that and well you know i think uh you know my work is all about dismantling our attachments to the self and ideas of the self and even the family becomes an idea and it becomes an entity that you attach to and then you separate from other families that's not the way we're going to change the world the way we're going to change the world is if we all are one and understand our children are part of this oneness. So the Year of the Awakened Heart is a course that they can take right now. That's a video that may come on and it it explains the course. And uh, they can join in and learn from the comfort of their home. I truly advocate them uh, exploring it. Wonderful. And do you know, uh, have any of your books been translated in Farsi? I don't know if in Farsi, but I know that in many other languages, but uh, if people are interested, it would have to be through a formal publishing house that uh, makes it happen, yes. Okay. Okay. I know that's always a question that comes up, especially from our viewers from Iran. They always want to know, you know, have the books been translated in Farsi? But, um, okay, so perhaps in the near future, if not uh, yet. Um, and uh, I know going back to school this time around with the uh, political atmosphere and everything that is happening uh, both here nationally and globally, internationally, um, I, I feel like this topic of cultivating character, building uh, these uh, small steps of raising consciousness and um, really focusing on that oneness, the unity, the the light and the good as a whole, and this holistic approach to uh, wellness um, is uh, really more than ever needed in our schools, don't you think? Uh, Oh my goodness, absolutely. I mean, this is the reason I do the work I do, because it's so clear that the imperative is that we start changing our children's hearts and minds. And in order to do that, the parent needs to change. Otherwise, there will be no end to this generational pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and when we talk about um, choosing hope over fear or uh, cultivating hope and uh, embracing peace, cultivating peace, sometimes um, I have to say, you know, especially in the current atmosphere, a political atmosphere, uh, I have some parents who are just so angry, Dr. Shafali. They're so angry and so frustrated and so anxious about the future that they say, you know, Nelly, uh, just right now, we can't really go there. <laughs> They, 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 they have lost their way. They have lost their, um, I guess, harmony in, in, in their relationships with, their, with themselves, with their children, with their community. So, right, because, because we, we, we don't understand that harmony is not because there is harmony in the world. Mm-hmm. Chaos is a, is a harmonious state of the natural world. Mm-hmm. And we have to become okay with chaos. What it means in our world is that there are always different layers of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And just because we are seeing unconsciousness doesn't mean we have to lose our harmony. 
We have to understand that unconsciousness exists. And now we have to figure out a way to cope with it. We can't want it to not exist. This is just the way of the world. And we need to accept it and find a way to take action that is not retaliatory or reactive mm. or as unconscious as they're unconscious. Mm. We have to elevate and find a new way. Right. And I know within our field um, that clinical psychologists and mental health professionals have gone anywhere from, you know, starting these campaigns like Duty to Warn and uh, mm -hmm. campaigns of resistance all the way to uh, just peaceful demonstrations. And I know uh, that um, Spectrum is pretty much in many different societies and many different groups, including the school and the parent association uh, groups. And so what are your recommendations in closing for bringing more peace into the school year? Well, I think really to take out the stressors of external indicators of worth, like grades and achievement, mm -hmm. back off your kid, create simplicity in their lives, allow them to decompress and connect to who it is they are, mm -hmm. find time every day to you know, spend time on a game for 15, 20 minutes, you really bond and connect with your kid. Take the time to allow bedtime to be peaceful and calm and non-stressed. You know, Take away extra things that are on the plate, streamline your attention and your presence and allow your children to also live a streamlined, simplified, decluttered life. I mean, that's the key to childhood is simplicity. Mm -hmm. A very good reminder, a very good back to school reminder. Dr. Shafali, thank you so much for your time today. Honored to have you on Mom Talk again. And I can't wait to see you at Evolve in September. Thank you, Nelly. Hope to see all of you at Evolve. You can use the code on my website, uh, drshafali.com. Get a $50 off using the code 50 off. Make a change in your life and come to this event because it'll really awaken and ignite your higher consciousness. You heard Dr. Shafali, make a change in your life, guys. It's a peace learning change. It's a step towards um, bringing more happiness, cultivating character, joy, consciousness, and mindfulness, and living with more presence and an awakened heart. It will benefit you, your family, and largely the world. Thank you so much for being with us. Dostan, as tawajjuh shoma be barnameh Mom Talk, dar in jalase ba khanum Dr. Shefali sepas kuzaram. Ishun yek az pish kesvatan dar rabte ba conscious parenting va besalah kitabeshun akhirin kitabeshun The Awakened Family hastesh. Website ishun www.tarnamayedrshefali.com hastesh va mitunin bishtar etalat az ishun be. گیرین از طریق تارنماشون تا هفته آینده روز روزگار خوش